Hi everybody, my name is Danica Joan and welcome to Custody Matters Live. And I have a special co-host with me today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> I am Caroline Rena, and um, I don't know what to say. What do I say as a co-host? <laughs> You'll figure it out. We're gonna put you on the hot seat. Yes. Um, that part I'm good at. <laughs> good. Well, you know, today we were talking about what are we going to talk about? Um, there's so many topics. We've had several people, several shows where we've had adult children of parental alienation, which was absolutely amazing stuff for parents because a lot of times parents are struggling. They're, they're really struggling with um, like, my my children's lives are totally destroyed and ruined and um, and if I only knew what my would help that would give me access to my child what could I do and a lot of my uh, guests that I had um, just lasered in man it was really awesome to have them on the show yeah, yeah. Um, so today today we were uh, we were talking about like living in the past. Um, I know for me, I found that like, even though it's been years since my parent, my children grew up and they have their own families and for that. And, and they, I felt, found myself constantly feeling apologetic, um, feeling like they were injured and they were broken. And I had to just hold them with, you know, in my little protective, you know, arms and stuff like that and not see them as big people. Yeah. And I realized that was to my detriment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I kind of had something similar. Well, the same, really, it was um, like even my son's 31 and for a while between the ages of 25 and 30, I was picturing him. It's still being between 10 and 14. So when I'm talking to him, I'm trying to, you know, protect him and do everything that I was never able to do. And it was just not working because he kept saying, mom, <laughs> I'm 25, I'm 28, whatever it is, stop doing that. You know? So you, you really, it's staying in that past mindset with them doesn't help anything. You know, it doesn't make it easier on having communication with them. I mean, in a way I, I started like just now correlating it between um, consider that you cheat you know you had an affair on your spouse and yet you wanted to continue repairing the relationship and if you do not get past the the guilt and the shame and the like i'm so sorry and and stuff like that to live in the present that the repairing of that relationship is never going to fully be mended until you put the past in the past and start yeah. focusing on what do we have now to work on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was sort of a similarity of like with my kids, I yeah. was always apologizing and regretting and blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was probably nauseating, nauseating for my children, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially when they're older. I mean, when they're younger, what I've, what I've learned is um, like during the time that all this is going on, kids are confused. So and, and that's just part of it. The other part of it is that they're still growing as children at the ages that they're growing. So when you're trying to confront your child thinking that they're six when they're really 10 and they're in a totally different developmental stage, you can't work with them as though they're six and it goes that way the entire time. So you, in your process of doing whatever you're doing need to remember um, where your child is at developmentally, for example, um, like teenagers are going to be teenagers, whether they're going through parental alienation or not, they're trying to individuate, right? And mm -hmm. so if you're talking to them like they're still 10, it's going to be a lot harder <laughs> on you <laughs> to try and communicate with your children or your teenagers because they're going to be more verbal and more, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I yes. mean... <laughs> just... I agree. And I, you know, I have all my children are, are adults and um, yeah, and I found that because I was constantly living in the past of trying to make up for the, the imperfect childhood that they had, mm -hmm. um, they, 
they now, since I've put it in the past, they actually now are excited and eager to spend time with me. And, yes. And, and when they call me up and use me as, you know, their, their counsel, uh, uh -huh. that was the other thing too, is they call me up, they use me as their counsel and I'm, and I'm, instead of getting that I've created a safe space for them to, to reach out to me, to give that to, you know, to give them comfort or advice or whatever. I don't, um, I get it as, oh, more opportunity to fix you, to fix, mm -hmm. fix what got broken in the past instead of getting, wait a minute, these kids are reaching out to you. These yeah. kids are really, um, see you as this, um, uh, safe and trusted person. So that's that validity that mm -hmm. you, there's nothing to fix. Mm -mm. And that is why it's so important to stay in the present because when we find ourselves in the past, nobody's there. It's just us and our mind is in the past. The kids aren't there. We're not there. Nobody's there. And same thing with the future. It's like, we're imagining what the future looks like, but nobody's there either. We're all here. So why not establish your life here and enjoy this part of it with your kids in the moment, you know, instead of going into that space of, oh my God, what did I say wrong? Or what do I need to apologize for? Or whatever. Cause you know, I've been there too. And, and it's just, my son said it so eloquently. I think he was like 24 when he said it, he was like, mom, you don't have to worry about just, just be here with me now because that's where we are. And this is the only place that we're going to be. He took a personal development course with me. So <laughs> he's going to say stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for any of that, I wouldn't even have been aware of that type of thing. So he kind of, he did a lot of guidance, you know. I'll tell you, our children, not just our children, but the children, the young adults of today, they are so much more aware of things. Mm -hmm. There's um, part of it, I think, is the the increased popularity of, of meditation and mindfulness mm -hmm. and things like that. I think that's really helped people, um, mm -hmm. you know, and especially people who didn't have such a perfect childhood, which to be honest, I, I can't say as I've met anybody who had a perfect childhood. I was just going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny because like I, for my own healing, like one of the things I'm doing is I'm reading a book called um, Complex PTSD which um, is really, really, I'm going to start doing some stuff on that uh, on my own, you know, channels, whatever, but um, it, it just, it, complex PTSD is an emotional flashback. You know, PTSD is a visual flashback and complex PTSD. So complex PTSD is like taking ourselves out of, of um, where we are and taking us into the past. And now I can't remember why I started talking about that. So this is like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done that. I, uh, I know what you're talking about. There are times when, yeah, when you meet with someone and it just suddenly your brain is going back into yeah. the, the broken person, the one I, I, I say the broken person I used to be, but mm -hmm. yeah, like it doesn't take much for somebody to walk in the door from your past and boom, like, um, somebody, because in my past, they a lot of the people that were infiltrated into were was the whole community. I went to my kids went to Catholic school, so uh, right. parents were very prevalent in that community and relationships and stuff like that. So um, I do remember that all I'd have to do, I'd be I'm doing really well and everything that, but the moment that a parent uh, shows up from that past. Uh, Ex, you yeah. know, that time when everything was just blah, um, <laughs> I would instantly go into this kind of like timid coward, you know, like timid, fearful person. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's like your little girl. It, it, it's like you kind of fall back into this little girl mode or little boy mode, what, you know, whatever the case may be. But um, being able to, that's, that's the whole point about doing mindfulness and different things like that is to stay in the present moment and for people, you know, for pe those of us who have complex PTSD or deal with complex PTSD is not, um, what's, what's the word? Um, 
I can't think of it when a diagnosable, it's not a diagnosable thing because it's not in anything, but complex PTSD will literally, I used to say, I feel like I'm still living in my past in the present because the emotion from the past is still there. It's like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm scared. Why am I scared? I don't know. This person doesn't, it doesn't look threatening or anything. They're not threatening me. I don't care. So just being able to, to work through that piece of it is, is huge. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of it, it, and it takes time, especially since it's kind of like um, a friend of mine and um, made an analogy of when you go down like virgin snow with your ski, you make this rut and then you do it again. And and then you're, you want, you're drifting back into the rut and making it deeper and deeper and stuff. And you're not able to, 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 make your own path at that point. Yeah. You're just doing the same, same thing. That's a good analogy, yeah. That's, that's what it feels like though, going through this. It's like both of us have been going through this for 20 years. And at some point, as I'm sure with you, know, with you as it was with me, it, that rut was always, it's like, you know, I keep trying to climb, <laughs> climb over here and the snow's so slippery, it's like whoop, right back into the rut. And it was not easy to do that. And just being able to, um, you know, work my way through that and to be able to get into a place where I'm not stuck back in there, you know, I mean, and you, you and I have a lot of similar feelings and situations and stuff. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And we were talking about, um, I, some of you may be aware that, but Caroline is also on our team for, um, creating some projects through kids need both. And um, we're always looking for ways that we can help not only educate uh, you, the viewers, and um, also work with the experts and and the professionals who are not just, I mean, the professionals who definitely meet and are aligned with our mission and our vision. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure a lot of our viewers know that it's all not created equally. Uh, not all mental health counselors are even aware of how to identify and distinguish parental alienation. Um, definitely not the educators and the judges and stuff like that. So the thing that I was uh, wanting to share is, uh, is with our team is that a lot of times um, our whole advocacy community is going almost like taking the approach of whack-a-mole. Let's see if we can force an outcome with the judges. Um, And that's fine if you can reach one judge, but normally every circuit has multiple judges. And if they rotate in and rotate out, then now your education has to start all the way from the very beginning again. Um, So then we go to the legislative end. How can we make laws um, and stuff? And we're kind of like pushing, an outcome there as well because the thing is is you can make all kinds of legislation like here in florida we're in a shared parenting state well just because we're we say we're a shared parenting state doesn't mean that the judge in the local circuit will agree to that and guess what the judge gets to say they get to say whether it's for the best interest of the child um they get they, that gives them full reign to do whatever they want. So we've been also trying to get with the APA and try to get the DSM, you know, we have tried to get the DSM-5 to actually put the word parental alienation in their diagnosis um, listings. And of course, that's great. It's definitely, we've made some huge strides in all of those areas. However, when my team and I got together, we're like, okay, um, maybe we need to take a fresh approach. Maybe we need to empower the parents. Because if you empower the parents and you, you partner with them um, and hold their hand along the way, um, it's like, it's like um, consider it go back to kindergarten when you send your child to kindergarten and they don't know anybody and they're terrified. Mm. But what if 
you made a relationship. That child makes you introduce them to the teacher or you introduce them to another classmate and then they're not so scared. Mm -hmm. So that in essence is what we're, we're creating as a team is we're actually creating a whole new platform which we don't have a launch date yet, but the goal is to do more than, I love doing the Facebook Lives and getting the word out, but ultimately it's so that there can be a two-way conversation, not just in the chat thread here, but a two-way conversation so that you truly feel like you're not going it alone. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and you know, it's also important because um, change can't happen. Sometimes, most of the time, as we've ex most of us have experienced, change can't happen within a system. Sometimes you have to come find a new way of doing things and start building that and that can create the change. And, you know, I mean, if, if you're, if you're doing the work, try, you know, as is right now, because that's what we can do, that's what's established, then that's wonderful. And also too, as we can make these changes to create a new way of doing things, I think that'll really help a lot of people, you know, with what we're, what we're working on. Um, I kind of, yeah. And I, I kind of, Another analogy, I love that, that's the teacher in me. I um, <laughs> think of it as, okay, so I grew up where modern medicine, if you were sick, you go to the doctor. You don't, you, you do whatever the doctor says, they write a prescription, you take the medicine, and you really do not have any self-education on your, on your well-being um, and stuff. And, but then over time, um, they thought, wow, you know, we should teach health and nutrition in schools. We should um, bring, in fact, a lot of doctors are now having to take an some classes in homeopathic medicine. And um, I absolutely, I go to a doctor that they will prescribe, but they also will prescribe certain supplements to say you know you should take this because this will really help you and they actually sit down and educate me on how to take care of myself so that being the analogy it's kind of this, a similar thing where we're trying to go to the source and how is it we can we support and partner with you as the parents so that mm -hmm. you are empowered yeah and um you know, to, to get the desired outcome and not just paying somebody to get you the desired outcome. Right. It's taking responsibility, basically take, I mean, you know, that you are in a situation and when you, when I, um, uh, rely on somebody else, I feel like I'm out of control. Like, I don't know what's going on. This person's in charge and I've got to, you know, that's how I felt with the first lawyer I had. And I didn't like that. So this, what we're doing is more like, you know, Hey, take my hand. Here we go. It's probably going to be virtual. It will be virtual, <laughs> yes. but, but we're offering something where it will guide you and make you, you know, it's like, you won't feel so alone. You won't feel out of control. It's, it's, it's a, an opportunity to have information, people, all these different types of things available where, you know, again, 20 years ago, we're lucky to find something in the library, <laughs> find a book in the library, you know, what you did. And yep. I got to talk to somebody initially, but other than that, there was nothing. This is like huge compared, you know what I mean? So yes. Yeah. I love it. I'm, ex I'm so excited. I can hardly stand it. And it's like, it's not going fast enough right? for, to, for us to launch our beta version, but right. um, moment, breathe mindful. Come on. <laughs> I'm just so excited and it's, yeah. we really are a stand that, that families are restored. Um, mm -hmm. We say it all the time. It's like our mantra, families are restored, not will be restored. They are restored yes. and everything that we create um, is creating, like we're putting it into existence yes. um, so that you have a loving relationship with your children and, uh, we and who knows it may reduce the uh, may reduce um, the percentage of divorce. I know to fifty percent of all marriages end in divorce, and then subsequent marriages it just goes up, up, up. And there's nothing 
wrong with a, a marriage that's not working ending because it's not um, the divorce that causes the trauma on the children. It's the conflict. Mm -hmm. So in, some, in fact, I think many of us would say, wow, I wish my parents had ended it sooner because them forcing the marriage to stay together till we were all grown up was was torture for us yeah and i'm going to bring the energy perspective in there too because kids yeah. can feel our energy so when we're angry we're angry at the other parent and we're doing this the energy shoots out at the kids the kids can feel that so they don't know what to do in that situation because they can't tell you what to do because they're children yes and so they are that's they also feel it that way so mm -hmm. Yep. And you know what? what? My time is up. It is. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm so excited, Caroline, that you've joined me. I, um, I, I always love surrounding myself with pos po positive people who are living in possibility. Hey, my alarm just went off. <laughs> oh, that means you really have to go. You really have to go. Um, Positive people, say that again, positive people living, living in possibility. In possibility. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of Custody Matters Live. Uh, we will catch you next Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, in the meantime, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.